Welcome back, everyone, to the second half of Olympus Rises, episode 13. Lucky number 13. Which, by the way, is my favorite number. Uh, it is the number I requested on all of my soccer jerseys, uh, which is pretty great. Pretty great. So, uh, in other news, we're going to go ahead and turn on Discord and see how everybody, make sure everybody's here and ready to go for the... Hello, everyone. Yo. Hello. Hi. Well. Bonjour. Well, uh, scared me well. I know that you didn't get much sleep or any last night. <laughs> yeah. So we mentioned that we played Don't Starve. What we didn't mention is I was up till about 2.45 my time. Is 7.45 Will's time in the morning. Hmm. The sun was up. Yes, sure, sure oh, was. Well. <laughs> sure, sure was. That game is is a teleporter though. It will teleport you to oh, yeah. another time because like it's just it's so engaging. You're like, never not doing something yeah, critically yeah. important. Critically important. Like if yes. you are, you're dead, and then the, you're just restarting and doing something critically important again. <laughs> yeah, the only downtime is like. Uh, the only downtime that ever happens in that game for me is winter time when the nights are really long and all you have to do is cook food. And you just wait for the crock pot to finish. For Jackson. For Jackson, yes. Specifically for Jackson. <laughs> Listen, this is how it worked. Poor Will. Poor Will, And first of all. I would, I would go and I'd farm six pieces of meat, which made three meals. Two of those would go three to Jackson. Good meals. Yeah, three good meals. Like 50%, like, you know, like 60, 60 hunger or whatever, which is a lot. Um, what, one of those was for me. Two of them were for Jackson. And none of them were for Will. Aww. I just had to eat monster meat. Right, so he luckily he was Weber. In fact, if you were any other character, Will, we would have been extra fun oh, definitely yeah if, if will could not have eaten monster meat we would have been so dead so much sooner <laughs> but yeah it became a thing where uh anytime i did eat anything normal it became <laughs> don't eat that that's people food oh my god <laughs> you guys are so mean listen jackson said it but it was the funniest shit i have ever heard in that game <laughs> because it's so funny like because like we're all well, just we're all just sitting around the campfire. Fun. Yeah, we're all just sitting around the campfire, and Will like takes meatballs off the crockpot, and then we see him eat something, and Jackson goes, "What did you just eat? What's in your mouth?" <laughs> <laughs> Will's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "What's in your mouth?" Like I was hungry. He's like, "No, bad Will. That's people food." God damn it! Now I want to play, and I don't have time. <laughs> It was so good. It was so good. Anyway, it's a great game. Don't start together, guys. If if you have like five bucks, I don't even know how much it is. Not even a full price game. No, it's more than that. Like fifteen, isn't it? Something like that. It's not a full price game. Almost like ninety percent certain. It goes on sale pretty frequently as well. Um. Also, the reason why the most most I'm not gonna open. Um. One of the main reasons why I uh. Why I wanted to play it again is because they had some new game mode. Oh well, I'm gonna open anyway. Okay, good. Um, they have some new game mode called the Forge, uh, which it's some like something completely separate from the actual game. So I was less excited, but don't start together, so it's always um, fourteen ninety nine, fifteen dollars. There you go, perfect. That was right on. But yeah, one hundred percent worth it uh, if you have friends that play it because it's so much fun. Mm. Um. Anyway, we were dealing with an assassin child, I think, uh, when we left off a moment ago. Um. Yeah, we were in fact gently asking her how many days she could live off her weird purple stuff. Yeah. So so here's the cool thing um is when you walk in it's not the purple stuff anymore right because there's two separate things that she was requiring 
Uh, you only saw the purple stuff, though. Because when mm-hmm. Gogo went the second time, it was the orange stuff, right? And I oh, think and that... I asked her for some. Lol, I remember that. Uh, and then she t- said it would kill you. <laughs> yep. Um, so when you arrive, uh, she has both bags, one in each arm, uh, Oscar. Um, and, uh, as you, as you walk in, uh, there's that, that kind of chill in the air again, right? As you, as you enter through the, the void presence of whatever she is. Um. Yeah. And, uh, you see her, she's actually, um, she's actually, like, sitting atop one of the crates, like, one of the empty crates in there, um, cross-legged. Um, and you see that she is, uh, she's got, like, they're, they're, they resemble playing cards, but they're kind of, like, uh, like a thick plastic, um, so they're far less malleable than, like, you know, bicycle playing cards. Um, they're almost like waterproof cards. Have you ever seen waterproof cards? Yes. Um, that are, like, super dangerous and you can kill somebody with them? (laughs) Wait, what? If so you like, throw them, uh, I, I I have I own a bunch of it, but um, but yeah, so they're like waterproof cards. So they're basically like plastic playing cards. Um, I just typed in waterproof. That's not gonna help. Um, and and she's like she's kind of like shuffling these and like um, laying them out in front of her and doing like the flip them over and then like flip them back over and like scooping them all up and playing them. And they all have very it's it's obviously in the mm-hmm. language of Tan, right? Like they're all. And uh, they all have, like, image depictions. And I think that it actually mostly resembles almost a tarot deck. Yeah. Right? Um, except it is far more cards. Uh, it's, it's far more than, like, what you would assume a typical tarot deck is. But it kind of gives you that, that sense of feeling. And I'm sure that Sriak culture has some sort of, like, mystic symbolism associated with certain things as well. Um, or maybe not. Maybe you've evolved evolved past that right um also who has church bells ringing sorry (laughs) it's amazing legitimate church bells no no that would have been imperfect um yeah so he he kind of i think you know notably he strolls into the room because he's not gonna you know risk another incident needlessly yeah. um and he you know noticing that she has like all of the iv bags hooked up yeah he he says um uh what's going on over there Devin? It, it's under control now <laughs> <laughs> we're just wondering what it is but, so yeah, the best so part is now that on. i know what his apartment looks like i can only imagine because like uh it's it's very like not not small small is not the word i want to use but like there's not a whole lot of dead space i'm curious what exactly is going what your dog is doing in there well um so he when he walks in Mm -hmm. he gets right to the point and he says um amelia how many days of supplies did you say you had? She kind of uh, she kind of looks at you with the normal eyes. She doesn't have demon eyes on right now, um, and uh, she kind of you can see her doing some like mental calculations, and she says, "A week, perhaps, might be, might be more if I can extend it." Why? There is a situation we cannot leave immediately. It's fine. It's your detriment. There's a human saying, you're preaching to the choir. Yes, it is to my detriment. Or I'm sure it will be. However, I felt it necessary 
since this is an unforeseen delay to inform you. If need be, you may want to ration your, and he kind of like gestures to, <laughs> you know, he doesn't know what the hell these things, this, this stuff is other than it's necessary for her. Yeah. He, yeah. And I think she says, she's like, she kind of sighs and she says, I have not been as frugal as I could be. Will be more in the future. I needed to regain strength. Spended quite a bit of energy getting us out of that. Yes. That was quite a thing. I think she picks what up on your you... curiosity. Yeah, well, I mean, he he asks her straight up. He, he says, um, what do you understand of your abilities? Is it like second nature or... There is semblance of control. Sometimes. There are others when I lose it. Like when we first met. We were lucky to be alive. That suit you have is terrible. Saved you. Hmm. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. I would suggest that that is not in my control, but I do not know. There are certain triggers to avoid, such as using. And you can see, like, she's like kind of like searching for the word. Um, and she says uh, a very strange word in Tan, right? Um, and then she says, "Leave your people. Call them." Psychic. Hmm. We tend to have an effect of noticed. At any rate, for your own sake, please prepare for less speedy a transfer as we originally promised. I understand. He nods. Is there anything else that we can do, especially in light of this? Will you be leaving me on the ship? I think that would be best. Do you wish to be? It would be safer for me to conserve energy. My thought as well. And the other Sriak shouldn't be bothering you anymore. Please play nice. Could not bother me if she wanted he, I think maybe he, he actually does chuckle a little. He says, you, you seemed concerned before, but if you say so. It was an annoyance. He, yeah, he maybe shrugs a little and he says, either way, annoyance then. She will not be annoying you. Please conserve your strength. We will be en route once this is taken care of. Very well. Um, hey. yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, as, as you turn to leave, uh, she says, Oh, Nico has told me your training is going. The one you call Chen? What does Neko know of that? He watches you. I should have killed that thing when I had the chance. <laughs> this Chen has quite some aptitude. He's a good student. 
Yes, he learns quickly. Neko has not misled you. Also, the one that is called Fortune. What is his purpose? There. He's. <laughs> God damn it, Jordan. <sighs> he says, uh, more than you might know. Neko says he hurt him. <laughs> I don't question that. I would like to speak with this fortune. <laughs> I'll see if he has the time. She doesn't even, like, offer a response. Yeah. He's, he's done what he wished. So, you know, this is probably as Oscar is, like, slowly walking to, you know, like... yeah. Yep. Back, back turn, like being polite, but also indicating he's on his way. Um, yeah, and he heads immediately back down to the the cockpit to see what the hell is going on now. Yeah, so by this time, everybody's up there. Like, Dr. Fisher, you're up there. Uh, Fortune's up there. Oha's up there. Chan is probably still in engineering, um, but is, like, patched in, right? Is is Oha gingerly holding a, a laser rifle? Uh, yeah, she's probably got it like strapped over her arm, just kind of like looking at it. Yeah, but she's standing probably like behind the the captain's seat or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and Oscar, you walk in. Uh, <laughs> so does anybody say anything, or do we just have like a mostly silent trip the rest of the way to? No, I'd, I'd probably ask Gogo. I'd be like, so. When are we landing? Gogo's like, I've got the spot. It's about how far? Uh, you're a couple hours away. Approximately one and a half hours away. Cool. Uh, until who are we what? What? I'm. I'm. Hold on, Oscar. I get. I'm getting there. <laughs> who? Who? Who are we fighting? Presumably no one. Uh, who are we fighting? <laughs> so, there's, there's who, not who been was a fighting your, who where... was fighting your dad? I guess. Unknown currently. I I didn't say who is who was. My answer still stands. Unknown. Yeah, you never said unknown. You said no one. That's not the same. Whatever. Um, what was your dad doing here? <sighs> one of many things that he thought was for the best. I think he was trying to collect these. And I think she pulls up, like... Some weird janky image from that tabloid. Yeah. <laughs> Which is clearly the fake geode, but like, you know, it's the best representation she has. Huh. Okay. They're supposed to be worth a whole hell of a lot of money. He's going to use it to help us. That's why I went to go talk to him in the first place. So, oh, so this was, oh, okay. Well, I'm out of questions. I'll be, uh, I'll be at, I'll be at the loading dock ready to go when, uh, when we land. Make sure you have one of those suits on. There's a bitch. Yep. Coco <laughs> continues to go back to her stuff if nobody else asks her anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does anyone else proffer any words of wisdom? 
and or queries. How many med kits should I take? Just... <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so like, so, so Dr. Fisher, like, you know, you know roughly about Thune, right? You know that exposure is the greatest risk here. Um, but again, there's also all kinds of nasty animal life that might live on this sort of planet um, in the toxic atmosphere that, it, that exists around it. Uh, it, it's like you're just going as far out of your way as possible to prevent Gogo from using her claws. <laughs> um, know, like, sad. <laughs> I never I said she claws, couldn't use, use her claws. Like she can absolutely use her claws if she wants to. Could really test this nanotechnology I got in me. Oh, so like. So, so real talk though. <laughs> in reality, uh, having a puncture in your suit is not the end of the world because it's like self-repairing stuff, right? Uh, like it's designed to self-repair, Just right? So, like, reasonably, maybe there is some science stuff that could work there, where if you puncture your suit the the self sealing just seals around the blades, right? No. Don't know until you try it. Uh <laughs> anyway. Oh, Dr. Fisher. <laughs> um so yeah, exposure is the highest risk on Thune. Uh it will probably kill you within you know, a matter of matter of hours. Uh to, Depending on the level of toxicity, there's different different levels via different locations on the planet, right? Um, however, there is no there's no um, no way to like get by unscathed with any amount of exposure. Um, at at least you're looking at uh, like you know a severe sickness. Um, in fact, a lot of a lot of uh probably like massive burn or like chemical burn wounds can occur um physical detriments uh you know it's sometimes you know depending on how the how the chemicals are mixed in the air it can be absorbed through the skin um sometimes it's inhalation that will you know eat away at your lungs so, so wear your um, suits <laughs> Yeah, definitely wear your suits. Uh, but, you know, in a pinch, you're not going to die immediately from breathing the air. However, sure. it will burn like you're breathing in fire, probably. And you'll definitely, like, take... If we're talking mechanically, there's going to be penalties to stuff you can do as well as damage, right? Like, over time, um, as it eats away at the living flesh on your body. So. Sounds enjoyable. Let's go. No suits. We're uh, we're air dropping in. Yeah. So that's the other thing. You can't just go down the cargo ramp, right? Like you're gonna have to like rappel out of the airlock. Yeah. So that you can keep keep it contained. Uh, keep the ship safe. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Because you don't so, want so you don't Stanley want the... doesn't die. Right. Yeah. Stanley is the big concern here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, uh, with that being said, we see the the dull green planet of, of Thune approaching rapidly, um, and everybody's kind of like preparing themselves. Now, again, you don't have you don't have a specific air or you have a you have a specific like kind of geographical location, but you don't have like a specific area. Perhaps you know you can you can somehow like utilize the sensors or or something similar to that to to help you out in this situation. Um, so I think that the first thing we see is you, you begin to get to the, the devil's bank, right? And the devil's bank um, is a series of kind of winding rocky canyons laced through this kind of spiry, almost badlands looking uh, terrain. Um, Thune is not particularly vegetation heavy due to the intense like 
toxic atmosphere. Um, but uh, the stuff that does grow is probably aggressive. Um, you know, it, it either is aggressive in the way that it populates or the way that it's adapted to survive here. Um, so there's probably like some, yeah, like scrubs, arid wasteland type um, fauna around. Uh, and through the cracks and kind of the dry ground, there are pockets of, of you know, like gases rising over certain areas of, of Thune. Um, in fact, it um, there's probably a saying on Thune that uh, certain colors of the gases are either safe or not safe to go through in a, in a ship. Um, you know, some of it might be ignitable, some of it might be... Um, you know, hyper cooled, so it'll damage your your ship with like ice particles as it flies through, um, and some of it might just be you know concentrated elements of uh, the gases that make up the atmosphere. Um, so it's kind of this weird uh, visage as you fly over the area because you guys didn't really travel a whole lot outside of the civilization of Thune. Uh, you were mostly confined to the city and then that one small raceway. So flying over the landscape, and again, Thune doesn't have doesn't have a whole lot of regulatory traffic, right? Uh, because there's just a, there's just races going on, be they in the atmosphere, in orbit, uh, on the ground, whatever they may be. Um, there's just always constant races. Luckily, you guys make it in without um, without having to uh, to resort to dodging racers again like you did the last time uh which is just probably good probably a good um and you get in the general vicinity of the area that uh you believe the message came from uh so with that being said what do you what do you do when you're kind of in the area kind of cruising over top of it um would oha or dr fisher be on sensors Dr. Fisher in this moment? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would I would turn to Fisher and ask him to make a scan of the area looking for uh, ships that are still looking, like giving off some sort of heat signature, uh, possibly minimal, but could still be active kind of a deal. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you want to make mm -hmm. a uh, do you want to make a computers check with intelligence? I would indeed. If roll twenty, stop bugging. Thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah. <So> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Goodbye, cruel world. You've yeah, man, that Dr. Fisher. The only thing you've rolled today are fives and tens. Fives and tens. I know it's <laughs> quite incredible. <laughs> so, uh, with your exemplary ten roll, that five never even happened. Um, actually, this is this is probably how it works out, Dr. Fisher. You're scanning the area, and the sensors are fuckered uh, in this particular part of Thune because of the just uh the way that the sensors operate piercing any of this weird toxic heavy atmosphere uh is almost impossible in addition to that um i thought you were going to say it was because we got shot by tanks yeah, yeah well yeah no that's that's actually that's actually my in addition to that is the ship's still like heavily damaged uh there's still like a couple of things wrong with it um so you're getting some like electrical interference as well in addition uh when you're looking for like heat signatures and stuff, there's all kinds of like pockets of gas that are heat that are like superheated, so you can like see like th something that might look like a ship, but it's not. Um, and I think that you're you're like no, I you know you're like I can't really find anything, but no, let me let me narrow my search parameters here. Um, so you start looking for metallic objects, and uh, you get much more pings off of metallic objects um and i think that you see that down kind of in a in a canyon area um 
that makes like there's this weird like waving curving area to the canyon um and i think that is probably the moment where like you're scanning it and then also we see it on the view screen at the same time there is a massive group of debris that kind of is piled up almost like a almost like a um like a dump uh that is kind of hanging over and it creates like this weird almost tunnelish effect to this uh underground like not underground but like this canyon area there's these big like stone bridges that are crossing over this canyon portion um and you can see there's like metal debris kind of laying on top and around it and this area is pretty big it's a pretty wide gaping area um and as you as you scan over it you detect that there are um there are a couple of heat signatures here that um might might be bio readings a couple of them uh down on the on the ground in the general vicinity but you're unable to pinpoint an exact location a 10 isn't enough to like give you it's that debris pile right there right um so i think that uh there's definitely something down there on the ground but until you go down and investigate you won't really know but uh mark down somewhere that um you you at least have signs of bio bio significance right on on this part of the uh the search area all right um and yeah it's it's quite possibly could be a ship with crew or some sort of humans or whatever definitely could be what you're looking for but you'll need to take a closer look to be sure Let's land this baby. So, go go. Um, because of the debris and just like the area surrounding, you're not able to land like right in the middle of this. Um, it's gonna it, you're gonna have to trek in there a little bit. Um, and it's also due to the fact that you know uh, these parts of these these part like these old derelict race courses um, because your dad's probably done a bunch of these right um it's it's actually quite dangerous to bring like another ship that is like emuted em, emitting combustible materials anywhere close to where there's a bunch of crashed race cars right like yeah it, you can easily being a problem yeah you can easily set off Man. a chain reaction that like brings down a mountain uh if you do it incorrectly um I so feel like that would even be something that gogo had witnessed a time or two oh yeah for sure so, with her dad to various missions yeah yeah definitely there's probably like you probably have like a carnal memory of like being picked up as a little girl in your little enviro suit and your dad like running and like flames flying towards him from some cave that he was in or he lit a flare and then it ex exploded right and then him explaining later now now go go like <laughs> now margo if that ever happens again don't, yeah. You know. yeah exactly um so yeah you have to find a place that's not part of like the main race area where all of these these crashed ships are at um and set down and then kind of maneuver out um so i uh i, I go to the crew um to say that oscar made it sound like all of you will be disembarking um how, uh... how true is that statement fortune's going that is up to the individuals i made no decisions okay. for for anyone else so that leaves fisher yeah i mean i guess gogo would make a plea to everybody for their help and that it would certainly make it go faster and we could get amelia back faster if everybody came but whether anybody took that yeah well actually i got a question gogo -Go. like these are a bunch of people that have never been on well they've been on thune once in their whole lives they may they may not understand all of the stuff that i mentioned about like they're being the, like don't light flares in weird places don't don't touch the gases that are emitting yeah, out of the I, ground i think that um funnily enough uh boomer 
had actually made a pamphlet one time back Probably. in the day. That, uh, that he made as a joke, right? That just said like, "Come not see to Thune. Do Thune," right? Like yeah. shit like that. Actually, I think he did. Yeah. Yeah. No. One hundred percent. Yeah. And, like, it's just like this list of like gases to avoid, and like he made it as a joke, but like she pulls that up now, and sends it to all their data pads, and <laughs> just is like, "You should peruse this before we go." <laughs> Yeah, I think if anything, it would be best if Oha stayed on comms at least. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think that like so so two things here is uh, Boomer's pamphlet um, probably has like three main points. It's like common man-made um, hazards, common natural hazards, and then common biological hazards. Right? Like it's got like three. It's like a three-page pamphlet, right? And the one for man-made hazards talks about how when searching around a derelict ship make sure that uh you know if they're sparking wires that's live don't go near them you know uh watch out for pools of of fluids leaking out of ships they could be combustible you know it goes through like runs down all those safety things and then the other thing um yeah absolutely it's probably got it's probably got the pit boy on it because he literally made a pit boy um mm -hmm. yeah and uh the the middle section is probably about how um you know the tectonic shifts and and gases that emit from the ground like different colors to watch out for uh different things to to be on the lookout for um and then there's probably a the the third one it details a couple of like various creatures and and fauna that might be dangerous on thune um so uh, it talks about there's these there's these creatures with these big um, they almost look like uh, almost look like fish with legs, uh, but they have these two or these uh, four very large interlocked fangs, um, and he says that uh, they're they're they they attack in swarms and their primary method is to like pierce through suits so that's like they've adapted to kill people basically um, that are out maneuvering around. Uh, he says probably that they are very, um, they're very, uh, easy to get rid of, but if they, like, latch onto you, you have to, like, literally physically pull them out, like, unhinge their jaws, and their jaws are very strong, you have to, like, unhinge their jaws to get them out of the suit, because they'll just chew through it very easily. Um, it talks about, like, a couple of different, like, burrowing creatures, uh, and how they move through like the natural tunnels that were made by uh, by the gas explosions and formations, um, and how they can like you know you can tell signs by disturbed earth um, anywhere on Thune that appears to be like muddy or swampy is probably dangerous in some way because they are able to um, kind of move through that freely. Uh, he says they vary in size anywhere from the size of you know. Uh, a, a boot all the way up into the size of perhaps like a uh like a small two-wheeled vehicle like your motorcycles uh but he probably like adds in like and if you see one bigger make sure you take photos because it, you could end up in the thune world record book right like for largest <laughs> sighting of of underground worm wonderful so. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so as you're all reading this, uh what Gogo's landing the ship. Right. <laughs> Fortune probably read half of it, said, alright, it'll all kill you. Next. Fair. Yeah. I have read it all three times already. <laughs> you just made details. notes in the margins. And... Yep. Yeah. Uh, what happened to the grid? Only this game. It's only because I have like hex grid and not hex grid. Alright. Really annoying for me. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Hold please. <laughs> Call is important to us. Oh wait, hold on. It's just it's just off like just a little bit. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say it's back, really but not right now. Please fix it. 
Oh God! Oh, God. Ah, no! <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to look away. Oh God, no! All okay, right, I'll see you see. next oh, week. God. Right. <laughs> oh, God, I gotta go. I can't be here anymore. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, I did it. I did. It. Hey, uh, everyone, remember two point two five. Two point two five. I'll Correct. forget next week. Got it. I did two point two, and then I did two point five, and then I did two point three. And then 2.25 was the answer. Good. Thanks, Fortune. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we should we should all punch it in there a whole bunch so it's easy to find later. Ah. There we Perfect. go. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Here, Perfect. let me, uh, hold on. Um, let's see, 2.25, yep, that's good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 2.25, everybody one. is just, everybody is... This guy too. He's also gonna let you guys know. <laughs> yes. Uh, whoever just put that on. The screen. <laughs> Whatever that. I don't like the look of that. <laughs> there you well, go. Perfect. Well, two point two. Five. Now we won't forget. <laughs> now we won't forget. Perfect. There's no. Works. Um. So yeah, the the Dog. pamphlet is like done in joke, <laughs> but you can you can tell that there are uh there's actual like. Because it's Boomer. I mean, you never met oh, yeah. him. It's, it's factually accurate. But it's factually accurate. Yeah. yeah. But it's also sarcastic. So. Um, so there you go. Uh, Dr. Fisher, are you beginning to sweat at all? Uh, you know, I'm just keeping a check on my heart rate. Yeah. Uh, you know, worry hasn't isn't surprising anymore. It's just daily life at this point. <laughs> Being. Yeah, I mean, you have the biostasis monitor, so you can just like look at your wrist and see where your current heart rate is at. <laughs> good, good stuff. Uh, cool. So, um, so it's just the four of you and Chan, I guess, disembarking. Is Chan going with you? Uh, yeah. Chan, yeah, Chan seems right? useful in this particular scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chan out. You know what? Let me just use your tokens from the Portana state. Oh, right. All this oil is on the ground. I forgot that I forgot that Amelia. Yeah, Amelia is weird. She uh, turned into a balloon. Also, I assume that uh, the bedecked outfits are going to be fairly loud. And by loud, I mean... Yeah. It, it'll be formal attire. The um, rocket launcher. Has been strapped to the back. For Christ's sake, don't use an open flame on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go, go go said she has a rocket launcher. That's what I heard. <laughs> but uh, also, did I keep that uh, weapon from you, Fortune? The laser rifle or my no, my revolver? No. You took it back from me. Oh oh yeah. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> like it was asked for upon hitting the the loading ramp on the ship. Okay, just check. But, but if you want a gun, there is a laser rifle for you. I was offering everybody one. Yeah, I would take it. Cool. But I want to know if I got to keep your super awesome gun. Not not that one. You, if you wanted another sidearm, you might get a really cool laser rifle, laser pistol. So that that looks like a revolver. <laughs> as as the group of you sets down, um, you have to drop the ladder from the airlock, right? So you're all in the airlock. I assume you're all wearing the advanced suits, right? Like that you got from um, Tan from the Tan homeworld. Yeah. So you're all using the advanced suits. Uh, Oscar, you're in your you're in your mech suit, though, right? Formal attire. Right. right. <laughs> yes. Uh, with your giant monoblade strapped to your back, that might be useful yep. later. Um, and. As you as you descend down the uh, the ladder, um, your your feet land on the ground. It's kind of the, again that arid, rocky. And as you do, like we see the the sun that's tinted kind of green as it's kind of like breaking through the clouds very strangely and rarely because um, it doesn't do that a whole lot on Thune. Uh, and, and it kind of like is is on the lower part of the horizon and slowly beginning to descend as you guys make your way into the uh 
into like the ground level canyons you're walking down the like the raceway basically at this point because that's obviously where you're gonna find anything if you're gonna find it um so as you begin your walk down like the raceway area um it's it's kind of eerily quiet uh there's no sound of like crickets or or anything like that and you make your way and you start to begin you begin to see your first like little bits of debris um and you're kind of in between these two mounds these two like plateaued mounds that you can see um and they kind of drop off they have almost sheer faces but they're rocky and they look they look fairly easy to like climb if you had to um and you're approaching kind of this uh this one of these stone like bridges that i was talking about is that it's not really like a bridge it's not designed to be a bridge but it's like a stone almost like a uh you know what i'm just gonna call it what it is it's like a tube that kind of runs between the two mounds um and you know it to be a tube because the side that's facing you has a giant hole in it and you can see that the inside of these this formation this rock formation in front of you is actually hollow um so, uh, I will, at this point, move you to here. Are you at the very bottom of the map, in the center? Uh, the brown line that you see is the, the line where, like, you would have to start, like, climbing up. What you can't see above that is the plateau. So, like, it's the top of the plateau, so you can't see up there, right? Because you're not up there yourself. But... Upon request, I will move people up there if they want to like go climbing and get better vantage points, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Force them like to go climbing to get a better vantage point. Okay. Um, you also see that there's this spire that kind of sticks out, uh, right, uh, right above you. Um, and kind of sticks out of the ground and like it looks kind of like the same formation. By the way, that rock formation, uh, if you're curious, is actually right here, so it's a little bit ahead of you. Uh, you just a little bit out of your range. Oh. Cool. Um. So, let me... Just FYI, I already have my scanner out and... Um, yeah, you're tracking things. Like, sure. Yeah. Um, so, Fortune... This gas is fun. It's, it's pretty yeah. easy to, like, <laughs> climb up, the, climb up the, um, the side here. You're pretty God good. damn it, Fisher. But it is gonna... <laughs> it is gonna take an athletics check just to make sure nothing terrible happens, you know, like snake eyes. I'm good at those. Yeah, so why don't you make it with dexterity or strength, whichever one you would be using in this situation. Probably dexterity, because you're over two points in that. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. So very, very adeptly, even in your suit, um, which, do you have spacer? I do not. Okay, so you actually get a, um, I think you get like a minus one to all your checks. Oh, do you have exosuit? Sorry. I do not. Okay, yeah. So you actually, you actually will get he's, a minus. He's trying to help you, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you get a penalty to all of your checks made. So whenever it says modifier, just always put minus one. On it. Actually, I do have a zero in spacer. Oh, you do? Okay, you're good then. Yeah. No problem. A zero is is what what is required. Woohoo! If you're wearing anything like what what Oscar's wearing, you would need a a one exosuit, right? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you would need exosuit. That's the difference. Yep. Um, cool. So you get up there. I'm gonna move you past the line of demarcation. Okay. So you can cool. see up at the top of the platform. Woohoo! Now you won't be able to see down. I'll have to move you back down, but just let me know if you want to like go see that. But that kind of makes sense unless you're on the edge, right? Um, the green, yeah. the green line is the edge of the, of okay. the area. Um, so you guys can begin exploring. As you guys know, I'll just make tell you the rules again, just to be safe. If I tell you to stop. Everybody stops, and then I blow somebody up, basically. Yeah. Then rocks. Uh, might you play red light, green light. And red light means you're dead. <laughs> Perhaps literally. Um. So everybody, everybody, go ahead and pause right there for a moment. Oscar, I want to describe what you're walking up to. Um, so this is this is the uh, this is the like rocky formation that's above you, um, that is hollow. You can clearly see like there's cracks in it, and you can see like where like little stone chunks have fallen through, but you can see like it's all hollow in between. Um, what you're coming up to here looks like a, for lack of a better term, a refuse pile. Um, it looks like a bunch of kind of like, uh, not like rotted garbage, but you know, it looks like maybe nice there was, place. yeah, it looks like maybe there was, um, uh, a bunch of like maybe plant life or something that has now like decayed and is now like kind of mushy and, and gross all over the ground here. Um, you can tell there's a couple of like fungal growths coming out of here. Um, you see these little white, these little white patches here. Mm. Um, in addition to that, it looks like it, it, it's a little bit raised off the ground, right? It's probably at your, at your knee level. 
Um, so you would kind of have to like wade through it perhaps, or, you know, clear it out of the way. Um, you know, obviously for like the racing ships, they would have no problem just passing right over it. Uh, and you can tell that mixed in here are some like pieces of debris like this. You can see is like a metal chunk right here up ahead. You'll see there's some other stuff mixed in with the debris there. Uh, yeah. Just to describe so what you're looking at. We're like presently on a track, right? Yes, correct. You are on the race think... track. You know, as he's he's sizing this up, he just maybe idly wonders, you know, if he would even realize before they were all killed if there was a race car, like a, like a, a pod racer that came by. Yeah, so like... Or the... if they would just all be blinked out of existence <laughs> and it would be... Yeah, you know, the missed. advantage you have here is you know that this is particularly closed down, but... Yeah. Oh, no, again... That, that doesn't he, necessarily mean there's no that. races. Yeah. <clears throat> he's he's aware that the likelihood is slim but i think like in the back of his head he's still just like musing a little bit like i wonder if i would even know yeah if he would even feel it or if it would just happen <laughs> like yeah like would i even feel it if that <laughs> yeah be a quick death at least <laughs> yeah um uh, so you guys can continue on now with whatever you're going to do uh fortune what yeah. you see up there is like a bunch of piles of debris um, some of them look like markers. Like, it looks like the, you can see, like, kind of stabbed in is probably, like, a flag at the top of this one. That's kind of cockeyed at this point. It looks like it was like, hey, here's the here's the path, right? Like, here's the, yeah, the lane. Like, probably got a big like arrow the, pointing. You go to the right of the blue ones, left of the red ones ex kind of thing. Ex exactly like that, yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, you can also see now, too, on top of this, uh, this structure here, uh, over here. I know you can't really see it right now, but on top of the, um uh the tube that goes across uh there's also a marker up there as well to like indicate enter here right oh, okay um and it's kind of like it's probably like laying face down like you know cracked and and toppled over but you can see yeah. that that was the that was the intention cool so you guys can continue on uh although oscar do you want to like are you pausing here on purpose yeah i think like maybe he's he's like gingerly shove like using his telekinesis to shove some of the shit out of the way yeah and, yeah like, totally so he's he's kind of like doing the doing the moses thing sure and like parting the plant debris yeah yeah <laughs> and it, 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 it offers no resistance to you uh yeah, as you yeah, as yeah. you begin to just, part it out of the just way like doesn't want to touch it so. yeah no i think that's perfectly reasonable so he's you know plowing ahead I have I have two questions. Okay. One is for Fisher slash Jordan. Uh, how far where is the the first signature of heat? Yes. Maybe you gaze down over the side and like. Well, I guess you are in calm, Calms. so you could just yeah, yeah, you could just calm him. Uh, also, uh, people that are not full health, I think you are. That's probably a good point. No, Fortune's been drinking, like, really heavily in the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you can move through that pretty easily by just parting it out of the way, Oscar. Um, um, one thing that Gogo is looking for, she knows her dad likes to leave himself hey, marked. Hey, guys, I found an arrow. Um, so that he, like, she's been with him on trips before where he likes to leave uh markers so that if he does get lost yeah. it's very easy to get lost in these places yeah. uh he leaves them so she's on the she's right. on the lookout everybody go ahead and pause right there though somebody move oh boy um so uh actually there's two things that are going to happen here um first of all go go uh well three things go go roll a perception check With... Actually, go go, Doctor Fisher, and Fortune roll perception check with wisdom. Yeah, all three of you actually. Why? Why not me? Why? You you have not triggered anything, Oscar. Oh my God. Okay. Good. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, you have your reroll there, Doctor Fisher. I'm okay. It's a basic success for right. what it's worth. All right, good. Uh, so, um, we'll start with the one who rolled it first there, uh, with Gogo. Uh, so Gogo, as you're as you're kind of like walking through, um, you find exactly what you just described you were looking for. 
um you see that under underneath like a there's like a dome uh it's almost like a almost like a cooking pot um or no it's almost like it's like a colander right it's got like little holes in it and you can see that there's a there's a very faint like blinking light and if you weren't looking for it you might just assume that it was maybe some some other piece of trash uh but you know that this is like a telltale sign of what your what your father does so that at like at nighttime in the dark he can look and discern his next point of of entry or egress um so you bend down to like look at it and, and confirm that um i do want to jump to fortune first though yeah uh because fortune and dr fisher this is going to happen simultaneously so i want to want to talk to fortune first um <laughs> so fortune as you're as you're kind of like walking around uh those um walking around that debris pile uh you begin to you know you're you're looking up at the flag and you're kind of like looking in the debris pile just checking for it um and you uh you hear like there's like a there's like a slip of the of one of the like the the structural pieces that's holding up the debris there yeah. and it kind of and you like you look at it real quickly and it kind of collapses in on itself and you kind of like take a few steps back from that and as you do um your foot like lands in a in a soft spot in the ground um yeah and uh you you hear just like a like a dull click and you kind of like look down and you see that <laughs> it's it's possible you might be standing on some munition of some sort well the right person is doing that so uh so as that happens dr fisher you're engrossed in your scans and as oscar's like created this path to kind of move stuff out of the way um you're, you're you know you're you're kind of you know scanning with your bio scanner and and you you look down like uh, down lower like underneath probably like a piece of debris to get your scanner in a little bit closer and two big yellow eyes just kind of like open up and look at you and you hear like this <laughs> this sound like someone is like inhaling or sucking through their teeth um and as you like shine a light you see that there's you you see exactly what was described to you in the pamphlet although the pamphlet had a cartoon picture of them and they are much more gross and vicious in person uh there is this fish looking creature with these four interlocked uh very razor sharp pincers oh um, fuck are they murlocs uh basically yeah <laughs> yeah are they <laughs> oh shit basically yeah it's uh, finally dawned on me we're in way more trouble now but uh there is a group that that I deal with and i think that oh. move them to the token layer yeah they're not they look token like bugs now but enough diseases and afflictions uh, <laughs> answer is no uh never but never i think everyone there. after i reset the order fucking murlocs uh they look like bugs apparently i made them bugs first but yes they're basically murlocs um including fortune because this might matter for you uh why don't you go ahead and roll initiative for me fisher's usual place yep I don't know. I don't know how so, how you're so good at rolling ones for initiative. <laughs> what are these things again? I mean, I did too, but Oscar's broken. Yeah. Mm. Right. So there. Uh, it says a bull cyborg, but that's only because that's what my name is, apparently. Change it. I didn't change it back. There's not. There's not any bull cyborgs. I promise. Okay, good. Um, I was getting a little worried. <laughs> you hear the whirring of a giant mace, psychically powered, coming yeah. towards you, Oscar. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have some. Like maybe that's what Oscar sees. He's just having a full-on PTSD <laughs> episode. <laughs> Flashback. The something. last time you were spelunking, it wasn't great for you. That's that's a true statement. Uh, yeah, let's not make this one last two weeks. Those were trying times. Um, so, uh, oh, did you roll for Chan? Go, go, yeah, okay. She sure did. Um, so, go, go, you hear Dr. Fisher make an exclamation, and you have a chance to react as you see, like, 
these little things like crawling up over the wreckage and like leaping at Dr. Fisher. Yeah, so I think Gogo's like, you know, knelt down, like looking at her dad's like, you know, trap, and all of a sudden she sees this and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> she, she like stands up, takes out her pistol, and goes to try to run towards that but currently i don't see anything happening so oh okay so you don't Although you don't do actually I see have, um my vision per my um uh, do you want your light out here's the thing i don't actually think i can because of the suit that i have right so yeah that's that's, that's the thing have. um however uh you do you could do like have, have your goggles, yeah i was just gonna say you could have your night vision goggles if you wanted yeah i mean sure oh did we land at night well, it's it's not no, it's just, night. It's, it's just always really dark on Thune. Here. Yeah, it's oh, just okay. it's just Generally, always dark on Thune. Always. On Thune. We could have given <clears throat> everyone a uh, what's it called? A glow bug to stick on their heads or whatever. Yeah, abs True. absolutely. Um, so your vision is a little bit extended with. Okay. There, you should be able to see stuff now, right? Uh, yes. Now I can actually see. Uh, um, okay, yeah, I mean, I sh Wait, how far is that? <laughs> this might be deceiving. <laughs> yeah, do measure, because it is it is as much to scale as... Like, four, 14 meters. Um, what's all the stats on this laser thing I use? Oh, the laser rifle? Yeah, because I actually don't have all that in my um, so it's... Uh, good. Oh, yeah, so I was, uh, let me... Let me hold. It, um, laser rifle, weapon AB1, energy, mm -hmm. attribute is dex, 1d12, 300, 500 range. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, so... <laughs> Even a laser pistol is 100, yeah. 300. So weapon AB is 1, put 1 in that category. Mm -hmm. uh, the skill is energy. Attribute is dexterity. Damage is 1d12. But if you're using a laser, it's 1d12 plus 2. Correct. Um, and then range is 300 to 500. With and it's 20 a 20 round magazine. Yep, and 20 round magazine. Got it, thank you. And then for the burst, <laughs> it's, uh, Plus no. Two. Yeah, so you can just, it, uh, if, you're, if you use burst, just use, you know, uh, three times the ammunition and, uh, add plus two to the other modifier when you roll. Yeah, your weapon AB goes to plus three. Don't, don't sweat it. Oscar is a walking generator now. True. You do have that telekinetic generator. Yeah. Okay. Never gotten to use it. I think we are all... I mean, get stranded more, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> well. Okay, yeah, I'm going to shoot the one to the right of... That okay. Uh, their AC is five. Basically because they're just small. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Yeah, three damage. <laughs> that is, damage uh, is enough, however. You just that's incinerate one of them. Uh, the one that's, like, leaping at you. Um, yeah, yeah. It, like, goes to, like, leap at his shoulder and just gets blown back. Yeah, go, go. you're already, like, kneeling, so you just, like, whip whip the rifle up, just... <laughs> and it just, just incinerates it. All right. Uh, however, the other three... Leap at you, Dr. Fisher. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. That's what you get for being nosy. <laughs> Not wrong. How many um how many consecutive adventures can Phil be KO'd on? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> What's your Wait, is this two or three? Oh, it's three. This would this would be yeah. Oh yeah, consecutive At adventures. Least every adventure <laughs> that we've been on. <laughs> hey uh Dr. Fisher, what's your AC? I've got smell um, insults. Combat feet well, from counts because you can wear it underneath your your exit. Okay, seat. yeah. Then it's uh four. Yeah, four. The first one hits. Uh second one hits. Oh boy. <laughs> Everyone misses. <laughs> So, 
Like, wow. you take one in wow. each arm. You take three damage. Yeah, that's exactly what happens, right? Is like the one the one that leaps at your chest, Doctor Fisher, just like bounces off, right? Uh, but the other two like grip onto your arm, and you can feel them pierce through. Now they're they're the teeth don't hurt particularly much, right? They just they're just like needles. They just poke you, and they kind of sting a little bit. The problem is there's that split moment where your suit is not offering you the protection it's supposed to be protecting you. So, since you are struck, can you please roll me a physical effect save? GG, guys. We love you. Hey, he's going to pass fine. it. He's going to pass it. Oh, he didn't oh pass boy. It. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not so fine. You take an additional two damage. So, the suit's, the suit's mechanism, the self-repairing mechanism, repairs fairly quickly. Um, here's the other thing with these ones, though. Now that they've latched onto you, they are latched onto you. Meaning they will automatically hit you next turn. And just deal their damage. And additionally, continue to rip your suit apart. Now you can take an action to remove one of them. One of them? You do have two of them attached to you. Why don't I just set myself on fire whilst I'm at it? <laughs> no, I'm gonna blow up the cavern! <laughs> <laughs> So, fortune. Um, I start digging away around my foot to see what I'm stepping on. Yeah. Is this how, how many landmines has Fortune stepped on in his long and illustrious career? As... <laughs> More than you would, uh, probably so, less than you would think, but enough to where he knows what he's doing. So I feel I feel as though you're also owed an explanation. Um, yeah. So as you as you like dig away, and that's not I'm not going to use your action for that or anything. Uh, as you dig away, you see that you are indeed st standing on a, like, a primitive landmine. Now, Gogo -Go may not have told you this, or may not even be aware herself that this is the case. So race organizers, uh, cheating is the biggest cardinal sin you can, you can have in a race. And there are people during races who will attempt to misdirect the competition. And so in order to prevent that, there are defensive measures in place around all of these beacons that guide people in the direction they're supposed to be in. Um, cool. It appears, I say primitive, but it's clearly a TL3 level landmine. Um, so, you know, at worst, you get a bunch of shrapnel in your leg. But... That doesn't sound fun either. While Plus poison gas and environmental hazards. <laughs> right. So like the big the bigger danger is what kind of chain reaction does that cause? Uh so as you're digging, you see that you've stepped on this, and there are two wires that connect on either side that are in the ground and disappear under the ground. Basically in both directions appear to be surrounding this uh marker. So actually, you suspect now you've stepped on a daisy chain of mines. Yeah. Um, and then you hear, <coughs> and Doctor Fisher squeal overcomes. Hmm. Uh, I've got two options. Dive and hope. Dive and hope is one of them. Dip. Or Duck. or do the, do the the old fashioned uh like cut off the sole of your boot keep pressure on the, ah. the 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 indiana jones so so yeah, yeah so the problem with that is you're wearing an exosuit i am so you could cut off the boot of the exosuit but then i won't have an exosuit that doesn't don't sound you, like a good plan don't you just do the maneuver with like the knife blade underneath it to just hold it down sure and then... yeah slide your knife blade under the thing yeah that might work yeah but then you might be abandoning your knife yeah which no, no then you put a rock on it and then you take the knife back mm. you are pretty dexterous i am uh i think i'm going to do that one because diving especially with the david daisy chain i might be diving yeah you might be diving into <laughs> the rest of them four like <laughs> on top of body them. length ones <laughs> yeah yeah okay so uh god what kind of check is this um it really sounds to me like you're using dexterity in some way, obviously. Mm -hmm. This sounds um, like this sounds like athletics. It's, it's mm, manual dexterity. Yeah, and yeah, I think. 
I think that athletics is certainly an option here. Uh, I think there is an argument too for like survival though. Uh, survival, I thought it was more like for that'd be man against nature. Right. Yeah. 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 Like I can... if he was hungry and he had to cook one of these bugs, that would be could, survival. Could I argue? Well, but remember, could remember I argue tactics. Right. So so remember. Uh, the description of the event is the skill. The method in which you do it is the attribute. So yeah. a dexterous survival role might be hunting, or it might be doing something dexterity to survive. But, um... Hmm. Tactics. I think that tactics is... I think that I would let tactics here, but I think tactics... Uh, you know I'd what? have to use like intelligence over. Yeah, I was thinking dexterity. that. I was thinking maybe like. Um, no, I'll let tactics with dexterity. I can allow that. I, I think that's fine. I, I going on okay. what I just said about how things work. Then I'm using tactics. Okay. All right. Let's see your <laughs> let's see your success here. I believe. Yeah. Hey. Hey, a twelve is pretty good. A twelve. So, so describe to us how you avoid setting off this daisy chain of minds. Uh, pretty much, uh, like we were saying, I take my my knife out because it is rather large, and it'll slide under in between my foot and the pressure plate or yeah. switch or whatever I'm stepping on. Yeah. Um, and then I find the largest object or largest objects within my arm's reach. Yeah, there's a bunch just, of like debris around you, so it's pretty easy. Yeah, I start piling like the heaviest thing i can find pretty much on top of my knife and then slowly slide my knife back out keeping all that pressure on the switch yeah so like the sweat is like it's that that point where like the tip of your knife is still like in contact and you have to like do that one maneuver where like you tilt the heavy piece of metal and slide the knife out and try not to let it fall because mm -hmm. you know if it falls it's gonna happen so like you're sweating and you're um you know, you pull it out and like, there's that. Yeah, like that. That <sighs> good, like, seconds where you just stand there waiting. Yeah, waiting, waiting, waiting to die or not. Waiting, waiting. Whew, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know you're good, and you you stand up and you sheath your knife, and then probably uh, you could take a movement if you want to make your way over to where there's gunfire. Take a movement. And that that is in this direction. Line. Hold up. Oh, I just hold up. In this direction. Uh, yeah. It's it's over here. Direction. Okay. Then yeah. You are greeted by another faint click. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> so I can make it all the way to the end here. It's like oh, I'm gonna run out of rocks. Uh, you can only move ten meters, remember? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh. I I, I can make it like right here. Oh, okay. Just just kidding. <laughs> I forget. So somewhere about here with the the corner yeah. and everything. Yeah, that seems right. Um, so I, I think that you still can't see appropriately because you're not towards the edge yet. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but you hear probably Dr. Fisher over comms like, get them off me! <laughs> I, uh, I shake my head just a little bit. Chan, Chan looks for guidance, Gogo. -Go. Uh, uh, I think... I mean, Chan's really strong. He could get one of those off of Dr. Phil pretty easily. But then he could also be running into more of them that could attack him. But Chan's not really going to care because he's dead. This is a true story. I, I think that Gogo -Go would tell him to go help Dr. Fisher. For sure. Okay. So right, I would so... think he would just run. So how far could he get? So he gets 10 meters with his regular movement. So you'd have to like dash to get over there. Which means he wouldn't be able to take an action. Now he has a laser rifle as well. He could shoot the one that's like on the ground. <laughs> I was gonna say, and he's really bad at that, so he might shoot and fucking hit Doctor Phil. Um, I've had there's... it these motherfucking bugs on my motherfucking <laughs> suit. Yeah, I guess I would have Chan shoot the one that's on the ground that's not attached to Doctor Phil. All right. All right. Uh, so let's let's add that to his thing. Laser Doctor Samuel L. Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. One D twelve. Three hundred. Five hundred. Okay. Go ahead and roll this for him. See a five. 
Hey. Nice. <laughs> Look at him. Nice. And fucking wrecks it. Yeah, he just incinerates the one on the ground. No problem. Because they're in my way. Yeah, so Dr. Fisher, you're like trying to stomp on it and just... <laughs> I actually didn't even burst with that, to be honest. Better. Uh, Oscar, you turn around and you see Dr. Fisher waving his arms around trying to shake these things off of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Oscar, Oscar, you know, he's like, guys, guys, I found this. Look at this arrow. Is this, did your dad leave this? And then he turns around <laughs> and just sees Fisher doing like, you, you know, the, the bug dance, trying to rip these things off him. Uh, and he, yeah, I think what he's actually going to do is try to just so the, these things look pretty flimsy yeah to him. is that fair yeah they're they're, Would it be they're weak. a reasonable assessment that if i like smushed one off him hard enough it yeah would like you could it, it, you could attack them while they're on him yes oh if that's I meant what you're like asking. you know to try and just pull them off Oh yeah, with 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 telekinesis, sure. Powers rather yeah, yeah. than yeah, absolutely throw a gigantic blade at Fisher. Yeah, I mean they they'll get their mental effects, a, right? Because you're trying to affect them with telekinesis. But yeah, they but they they're bugs. Really, they're bugs, right? Yeah. That's, so I it's think basically I think, like yeah. the 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 thing here is not going to be if they actually resist it. It's going to be if Doctor Fisher is like being too erratic for you to focus. <laughs> like that's probably the the bigger danger here than. You know anything else um so you just want to like rip one off and smush it with your with your telekinesis? yeah i want to try and just explode one off him sure so if it could make a yeah, you know mental sure will. save oh it failed <laughs> oh boy so fisher, yeah. one, of, one of them one of them on your arm just like explodes yeah into, it covers like, your face plate out of goo yeah it covers your <laughs> face plate with like this weird like purplish goo that's like dripping down um your your face plate now dr fisher uh so yeah exactly um so here's the deal though dr fisher its teeth are still inside of you yay so you're gonna have to pull those out at some point uh it's not gonna cause you any damage though but like you basically have big giant needle spikes sticking out of your arm i'm getting further but exposure to this toxic radiation or or just leave him in there up right around it yeah the suit's sealed up around it yeah. but i mean like but it sucks but yeah it hurts it hurts a lot just just leave him in there you look cool yeah, that's what they look, say you look wicked metal right now though to be fair <laughs> that's so <laughs> brutal uh so dr fisher it is your turn <sighs> How do I get this thing off? It would be an opposed athletics check. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I believe. It's I mean, it's a bug. I did, Come on. I did my best. Come I on. did my best to help you. Uh, fine, fine. I don't suppose I can be super intelligent on how mm -hmm. I rip it out, can I? <laughs> This is this is a brute force thing if there ever was a brute force thing. <gasps> hey! Yeah. Yay! You did it. Hype. Yeah, so now that you have both arms, you grab like the top of the jaw of one of them and you just like rip it out and you just throw it on the ground and it's like kind of scuttling around like kind of flopping like a fish does like kind of on its on its side and it gets up again. It's not dead, but you you have the ability to to perhaps affect it or maybe Gogo can affect it in this next turn uh as it squares off with you to eat you again but you do have movement if you'd like to move but you do have movement you could go hide behind Chan or Oscar if you wanted to <laughs> that is the yep, thing find a different target that is a thing that you could do yes i i think uh <laughs> actually either one of those I'm targets out. wouldn't be bad yeah i'm 100% out all right Go, go, you've got a clear shot. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking try to incinerate it, man. Yeah, AC of five. Ooh. 
Oof. Oh. Hard miss. Oof, yeah. You're lucky it wasn't still on Dr. Fisher, because I <laughs> definitely would have imposed some damage on him after that one. A one. Ouch. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Uh, so it sees Chan being the closest next available target. It's probably because Dr. Phil ran, like, directly in front of me. So it's going to it's going to try and latch on to Chan. See how successful. Nope, misses. It just leaps out and Chan just like deftly steps out of the way. Fortune, it's your turn. I run to here. I would like to see a thing and shoot a thing. Yeah, so you get to the edge. Let me move you over the threshold. I'm gonna move you over to here where you're not like right on top of the rubble. Actually, no, it probably makes sense to move you over here, to be fair. Yeah. Um, so, can you see this? Uh, does it kind of look like a spider thing? Yep, yep, you should yeah. be able to see it. Yeah. Then I would like to shoot that thing. Yeah, go for it. Uh, AC of five. Mm. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is hurt. Fucking fifteen damage. Yeah, no, it just it just dies instantly. <laughs> Dead. We are no longer in combat. Uh guys, uh watch out for landmines. <laughs> and then Noted. <laughs> Fortune right? just walks away again. Are you just gonna go back on the other side, Fortune, and keep walking around? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I would take a look at Fisher's arm. Like, just not to actually, like, medically do anything, but just, like, yeah. to inspect the fucking shit that's, like, sticking out of his arm. Yeah, so, so yeah, the holes that are in the, uh, like, in the right arm uh, are sealed up by the suit already. Um, the ones that are in the left arm, you can see, like, there's these spikes that are sticking out the teeth, right? Um, that are kind of sticking out, and they're kind of, like, tied to part of the jaw still that wasn't exploded um you know i've never yeah. experienced that before but I've seen enough people with them in their arm hurts doesn't it you have no idea as i get out some pliers and uh pull it out yeah it's it's excruciating it doesn't cause any damage to you but it is excruciating Jordan, mm -hmm. um, I would like to emphasize that I am searching while also watching for soft areas of land. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, so for you, uh, let me explain kind of what you see here. Um, because you can, you're can you up above stuff, and now you can kind of see some other things. So uh, I'm going to draw a line from you. So zoom out your map so you can see what I'm, what I'm pointing to. Um, so there's a bridge here. This rock face right here. Yeah. kind of is another one of these tunnel things that leads over here to another plateau that is okay. about got it you can see that there's another tunnel bridge that leads here along this path right okay and there's a small island plateau right here okay got it and then right over here there's another you, you probably saw it when you were on the other side but you can see it now as well uh, there's another tunnel bridge that goes over here, and there's a big, like, larger plateau that kind of goes off screen for us okay. kind of between these areas. And then the path is basically all of the end of the cursor. Okay. Cool. A little loop, essentially. It goes sounds, like, between this island sounds and Sounds good. Uh... Just so you're aware of what it looks like. Appreciate it. While you're up there. Um, yeah, yeah, looking for soft patches of grand, absolute, um, soft patches of land, absolutely. So. Yeah, because I don't want another mine. All right, so everybody can continue moving on, uh, as Dr. Fisher. I don't know if I want to. You, you do, don't worry. <laughs> uh, and that's obviously um, the, the edge of the, the plateau. If you wanted to, like, look over, let me know. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I do want to look over here. So is this uh, that I'm coming up to a dead end here? Uh, no. It looks like there's just a bunch of debris that's blocking your. Oh, line it's a, of sight. it's like in 
Oh, I see. It's like an underpass kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, oh, so also, I think I made it so that everybody can see that light, Gogo. Uh, yeah, I totally did. Um, but you all, if you all want glow bugs, we can do that. And I can make everybody have that kind of it. It Fortune makes... does not want to. He specifically does not want one. Okay. Do you want one, Oscar? Uh, can't hurt to have Oscar be a more popular target than the rest of them. <laughs> Do you want one, Dr. Fisher? Yeah. At this point, no. I could. <laughs> Do not have um, a glow bug. And Gogo overcomes what I told people that we're definitely in the right spot. She found a marker. Yeah. And to also continue to be looking so, for others. You wanna you wanna look over the edge there, Fortune? Sorry, yeah, I was just messing around right here. here. Okay. Uh so that's actually not the edge. There's a there's a rock there, but here, you'll be able to see oh. some stuff there. There you go. So you can kind of see down into the into the canyon area there. And this is the path? Mm hmm Yeah, that's part of the path. You see Oscar uh, like hey, walking. I see around. someone coming. Yeah. You're standing like I, I give Oscar, Oscar a friendly wave. He he waves. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, both of your only perception checks. Yay! I love perception checks. Can I do a perception check with uh, dexterity? Nope. Wisdom. Are we sure I'm not feeling with my hands? Or seeing with my hands? Oscar, Oscar is frosty. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar, you look up and you wave at Fortune. Um, and oh, you no. see, uh, like, in in the path, like, below you and Fortune, right? Um, like, or in between you and Fortune, um, you see that there is uh, the the ground. It's not that rocky outcropping. It's almost sandy, right where you are. Um, and as he's kind of waving mm -hmm. to you, uh, you see that there's there's kind of like this weird churning of the sand that that begins there. Yeah, he the wave the wave turns into like the universal hold your shit like stop <laughs> yeah like so his hand just stops like dead and he says uh fortune you see that yep well a seven sees that yeah okay yes. yeah yeah he, yes, if he, if he points you in the direction you see it's kind of churning and it's beginning to like kind of fall away and and it's it's beginning to open up a little bit, and you see kind of poking out of this <clears throat> hole um, is the head of a figure that looks something like. So long as it's not a tremor. Oh fuck! Why is that <laughs> so close to me? <laughs> Rip. Um, <laughs> Oscar. Uh, bedecked in light the creature kind of like looks around and kind of looks at you and you hear this weird grinding almost of like stone on metal just a mm. um, and you feel the ground kind of begin to rumble beneath your feet as the creature begins to like slide out of its um, out of its hole uh, and when it finally brings itself up to its full glory. <sighs> that is Woo! disgusting. Yeah. It stands like this, kind of addressing you. It... I don't know if hostile is the term, uh, but it definitely doesn't like you, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> I I think... So So we have, like a bushel of these glow bugs right sure <laughs> i think oscar oscar's first instinct is to just like float it past the thing in the <laughs> other direction like immediately down the path yeah so to you want to light that... a bunch of glow bugs up well, no, he he just wants to take the one that's on himself. Oh, the one that's on himself. Presently. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His source of light. He's going to, like, without, you know, he's trying to stay relatively still. Yeah. Um, so is it, is and it he takes it off. Is it sort of reaction? Uh, no, I think that everybody's in a freeze moment here while Oscar determines what he's going to do with this thing. Unless you wanted yeah. to, like, prepare a shot. I would allow you to do that. I mean, I, th I think my old 11 should 
yeah. I'm going to argue that that it, should give me a... It, gi- it gives you a moment to do something. That's why that's what I'm letting yeah. occur here. I think, yeah, what, what he does... Uh, I really don't want to piss this thing off, and I can get way more creative with this, but <laughs> I think he's just going to take the glow bug and just, like, float it past where it presently is, like, on that trajectory. Yeah, sure. So as you begin to float it... Um, I, I would like Fortune and Oscar. Can you make me stealth checks uh, with yes, dexterity? This is essentially just to remain still and not draw attention. That's really all this is, because on a, on a significant... Ugh. Ugh. Okay, well... Guys, please. <laughs> I just rolled an 11. Fuck off. <laughs> so yeah, yeah so... Arguably more important. I'm trying my best. Yeah. Well, Oscar, here's what happens, right? So so you float it past it, and you see that it kind of like shies away and follows it a little bit. And then after it's past it, it turns back to you. <laughs> Cause now now it can see you better and address you better. Uh, uh and then is going to try to bring its maw down upon you. So it's the roll initiative, got it. Uh well, as soon as they clear the order, hold on. Yeah, why don't why don't we roll initiative? Is this another one from Dr. Fisher? I'm giving him lots of opportunities here, okay? So Yeah. Hey. hey. Damn, Gogo's always ready to fight. Hey, good. Right? Screw you, good. Good, like good, good, good. Oh. Good, good, I'm good. On Can you stop with the hacks on? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, Chan gets an 8 too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chan, oh go, can, Chan, go wrestle it. Can he please Chan. just, like, Superman Karate punch this chop. thing out yeah. of nowhere? One punch it! Please, one punch it! Yes. Just, like, one punch. Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking... Blows into the fucking. Oh my god, wait. Oh no, that's so far. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, maybe if he was if he was good. Alright, so um right. So so here's here's how this goes down, uh, for you guys. Um Oscar, you're like trying to remain still and you float it past you, and then like after it goes past you, it kind of like turns back to you because it's like, oh thank goodness the light's gone now. Uh noted and (laughs) and yeah i think it's right before it descends upon you the pitch in the grinding the it goes high it goes almost like 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 static on the radio um and then it lunges down at you Um, sure uh your ac is pretty good i'm sure Right. Don't. Oh, never mind. Disregard. Uh, what's it's, your a, it's a it's a one. Yeah. And something. if I were smarter, I would have used my action to. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It, it. You just. You just like leap backwards as it lets you like crunches into the ground, and you can hear like it breaking up the stone as it's. So it sounds like something you don't want to get hit by. Uh, and crush and crumple all of. The- all the stuff around. Um, go go. As you're like pointing Chan in that direction. I don't think I need to point him in that direction. I'm pretty sure it's pretty obvious what. Well, oh, there's another thing. <laughs> oh shit. Well, uh, bursting from some rocks over here, almost as if in response to the call. Tremors, guys. God, I hated that movie. Have you not even seen the movie? You remember how terrified of that movie I was as a kid? Yep. Okay, so you can't see it there, but you can That's see it worst. here. There you go. Uh, what is going? On? Suddenly, Kevin Bacon bursts from the soil. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin you, Bacon with why is this? Shotgun. Why is this thing? Oh, it's like underneath. Okay, so you see it. It's it's off in the distance. I see. I see what. 
Um, so it's off in the distance, but it bursts from a wall up in this direction. Go, go. Uh, and it looks similar to that. It, lo well, it looks identical to that other beast. But it begins, like, making its way over towards the sound that was made. Is this what Stanley's going to turn into one day? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, that makes it Chan's turn. What do you tell Chan to do? Wait, okay. So I hear or see... You can, so, like, the debris is blocking your difference. vision. The debris okay, is blocking okay, your okay. vision, but you can see it because it stands above the debris. Like, uh, hold on, let me, let me, um... No, no, it's fine, it's fine. I just wanted to clarify that in particular. Um... And this archway right behind me is just that, right? Like a yeah, stone archway? It's, it's like a, yeah, it's like a tubular archway that kind of goes over top of you. Hmm. How hard would it be for Chan to get, um... To get up on top of the plateau? Yeah. It would take his movement to get all the way up to the top, but... I made it pretty it. easy. Yeah, it's just an athletic check with strength or dexterity, depending on what you want to use. Yeah, I think I want to get Chan up off get the some... ground. Yeah, really. <laughs> so we can jump on something's head and then start punching things? I mean, yeah, that's the ultimately anime style what I'm yeah. going to have to happen, so... And scrambles up the, scrambles up the plateau, no problem. Oh, he should also have a glow bug. I would say. There we go. Can I have him get up here? Uh oh yeah yeah, yeah totally. Uh I would, I moved him up there because that's past the like. There you go. Yep, he can scramble up there, uh, and he can shoot as well if he wanted to, whichever one he wants to shoot. Uh well. I know you can't see that one, but you could totally shoot at it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to shoot at the one that seems to be coming from the right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, pew, pew. these things have an AC of six. It's not particularly hard to hit. Yeah, they are pretty large. And what do I have to do to get the plus, dam plus two damage? Uh, just burst. Yeah, when you burst, you get plus two damage. Um, so, if you want to just put the plus two in there and then put the weapon AD at three. I think Fortune uses two separate entries for it, but if you just yeah. want to always fire oh, burst, yeah. yeah, if you just want to I always do. fire burst, just plus two on the damage and then uh, plus two on the weapon AD, and then no nothing on the modifier. And it was six. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> and you hear the soft like <laughs> of all the bolts hitting with. Uh, with impunity, but the creature does not go down. How silly would it be to do that? But it does turn its direction towards Chan and begins making its way over there. Uh, Gogo, it's your turn. I mean, listen, if you want to fight these things with your claws, be my guest. <laughs> I don't think I've come to that quite yet. Perhaps well, Gogo lets out a face. menacing howl and charges. <laughs> But, uh... And she turns into a were spider. Oh, Fucking no. not funny. Oh. That was <laughs> not soon. funny at all. That was not Too okay. Soon. It was amazing. She was right. She was right. I think I'm gonna try the same thing that Chan did, but my athletics is shitty, so perhaps it's not gonna go well for me. You got this. That should get you up there. That's more than a basic success. <laughs> yeah, an eight is enough to get you up next to Chan. For sure. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. And All then right. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. See it. They have the high ground. You've already lost right? Worm. We, we won, right? That's it. We both have high the ground. The Worm stands taller than the archways, though. Too. You guys are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The Worm has <laughs> consistent high ground. <laughs> Shit. The worm, the worm is the high ground. So, so now we have to get on top of the worm. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, see, yeah. I'm glad. Oh. I'm glad you knew where we're going. Uh, Holy shit! That, that is your second one. one. Oh my god! 
I'm, I've caught Damn. it from Will. Will, take it back. Ew, it's I don't contagious. want it. It's don't true. Want it. Will, Will gave that shit to you. That is that is a true statement. Come right. highly share the misery I've faced <laughs> this entire game. I don't want it. Don't All right. It it Oscar, it is your turn. Okay, Jordan. Yeah. Is it, is it time it's to... Attention is, it's attention is away from me. I want to get behind it and try and just stab this thing in the Stab I mean, this thing like in the back of wherever I understand its head to be. Yeah, I mean, its attention is away from you is a is a is a weird way to say it, but yes, you could attack it. I'm trying to angle for advantage because it is distracted. I know you are, but technically, it's it. it's engaged with you. So, just because I narratively described it as like slamming its head and grinding some stone doesn't mean it's they're they're shooting at a different thing, Oscar. Yeah, there's one up to the. Oh. Oh, I would have said over comms, there's two, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe oh. that's appropriate then. <laughs> yes. Oscar yeah, just heard would... gunfire and thought you were helping. No, no. Yeah. You heard you heard gunfire, but none of the bolts Not went in your direction. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said I would have said incoming from the whatever cardinal direction I believe that to be in this tunnel that West. <laughs> yeah, north northwest. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. The name of Kanye's kid. Uh, correct. yes, correct. Both of them. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Well, if that's the case, Oscar... You know, you're very much you, know, you and Fortune over here. Okay, yeah, he's gonna drop his shield, like, click it, and then try and just fling his... Yeah, he's gonna try and attack it. The big boy? Big boy, All right, yeah. Let's, I let's think, see it. Um... Is there any way for me to where where is this relative to anything else? Is this high or low? Yeah, so that's high. So high. so remember, brown is okay. the base of a plateau. So like it, okay. you could you could teleport up there if you wanted to. I would I would definitely allow that. You'd be much closer to like closer to its head level yeah. question mark. But yeah, you could totally do that. So we're gonna yeah he's gonna pop up there yeah sure absolutely uh, i'll leave you on this side of the the viewpoint uh because no, the yeah, so you can still see the creatures because if you go on the other side then you can see like the top of the plateau but i assume your focus is on the creatures right now. that's i mean that's fine this thing yeah, is fucking it's... huge i'm sure wherever i move it's gonna yeah but they, they also... obviously have more movement than you do <clears throat> Yeah, also in response to whatever the hell is going on over there, he's trying right. to get a peek. Sure. Um, yeah, so it, yeah. once you do that, actually, you could see that right about here on the map, um, If you, it's it's just out of the actual vision, but it's large enough yeah. that it blocks part of the sky. Uh, you can see that there's another creature that's, like, surfaced and is oh, heading in your direction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, AC of six. Boom! Nice. God damn! Nice. Boom! Nice. nice! Holy shit, dude! Captain yeah. falls down. He, Game over. Next. Internet he took the high ground. <laughs> he took the high ground. Dude, it was all yeah. Good. Good. So, the high ground. so you slice through this creature yep. and viscera just sprays everywhere um and the creature like kind of like collapses and like slams into the side and you can see like where you opened it up right like where you where you open up this gaping wound just below its head um it's mm. like pouring this weird mucus out of it um and as it does that it appears to be like like screaming and raging right um and yeah, you've you've injured it severely. It is, it is very hurt. It's not dead though. If, if it was given a number, it would have two health points left. <laughs> Maybe two two <laughs> would be a nice, sensible round number of health points for it. To it, it sure would. <laughs> would be a nice, sensible round number of health points. Doctor yep. Fisher, it is your turn. Beautiful. Uh, Coward let's... fear is that. Your game. Yeah, it totally is. <laughs> uh, you said the 
Come on, Fisher. Fisher has come through before. Don't. Care. Where's your icicle? True. <laughs> True. Did you bring your icicle? We need the icicle. <laughs> Well, that's a no, guys. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, uh, to be fair, you hit it. Uh, I don't know which one you were shooting at, the left one or the right one, but it doesn't really matter. I can't see you, the right one yet. Oh, okay, so. yeah. You probably, like, <laughs> and it probably, like, bounces off of the, the hide, but doesn't cause any significant damage. Uh, Fortune, it's your turn. It is. Um... Fortune's gonna do one of these thingies where, where he just comes back just a little bit. Um, and then I would like to say I'm in an area where I can go prone. Sure, sure, yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to pull out my sniper rifle and I'm going to aim to shoot at the one that's way over here that I can't see, but I can see. Right, you can totally see it, sure. Sure. Yep, so I'm, I'm going to use my action to aim. Okay, sounds good. The next turn, maybe you can just put a bullet right through its carcass. Right. Correct. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, uh, Oscar. Hey, Jordan. Can you roll me a perception check? I would love to. There's gonna be more of them! Tell me it's like a Hydra. Good. Remove each other. So, um, you, this is still the, the plateau. You can just, I'm moving you so you can see the plateau now, so you can see what, what's mm. about to happen. Yeah, um, I know I'm within range of that stupid thing, no matter where I am, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, you, you see this, this, um, you know, this, uh, tubular archway. You see it's rumbling, and there's, like, dirt falling off of it, like, loose dirt, uh, falling off of it, and, like, you see it crack a little bit. And you see the ground begin to churn right here. Mm. And beginning to poke its head above the above the little tiny cloud area. Or the little tiny dirt area is another beast. Mm. And it looks for the source of its anguish of its friends. And uh Fortune, as you're aiming, you do that thing where like you just kinda look up from your rifle and then like you see like coming up out of the ground right behind uh, right behind Oscar, uh, you see this other beast kind of emerge and of course. begin to look around for a target. Um, and that is where we end our session. Yay! Come back, it will be... It's gonna be fine. It'll be Chan's turn. <laughs> and then New Worm's turn. And, and like, well, you guys can play without me for the next couple of weeks if you need to, if you have time. But yeah, we'll, I will we'll, be unavailable we'll, for a while. We'll talk about that uh, in just a moment. Let me do outro, and then we'll, we'll discuss what our next yep. game is. Cool. 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 GG. GG, everyone. Uh, hey. No, no one's dead yet. Uh, as, as a reminder, I tried to get you to do this earlier, and I've made it worse because you waited. Throwing that out there. Just throwing that out there since you tossed away that plot hook. Well, since Gogo tossed away that plot hook, I've made it worse. I never, Oscar never had a chance to voice opinion, <laughs> voice this an opinion on that plot situation, hook. Isn't it? This is one hundred percent another sewer situation. Yes, I get I don't very know upset. What that means. I get very upset when I spend a lot of time making a thing and then you guys don't want to do the thing. <laughs> and then we fuck off like three times it's... and decide not to do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> The sewers thing, for those that don't know, in, in Siege, in the D&D &D game, uh, I had the sewers planned. I planned them twice, and both times they refused to go inside of them. <laughs> so when they, finally, when, I finally, when they finally did go inside of them, they're like, okay, we have enough levels now. We have, like, a legit healer now because the other, the other cleric died. Um, wow. <laughs> it's true, but wow. <laughs> Put it that way. Uh... <laughs> So, because all of that happened, they're like, okay, we can take this. And I was like, here's all the Eldritch Horrors that have ever existed in the entire D&D Monster Manual. Um, because you guys avoided my very carefully thought out dungeon twice. You, you open the door to see a complete bestiary. 
<laughs> it's basically what Some happened. Yeah. 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 Uh, cool. Awesome. So, congratulations, everyone. You survived. Yay! Doctor Fisher's technically the only one injured. That's true. Which is par for the course. Well, I mean, Chan's dead, but that's fine. That's normal. Chan's, Chan's been dead for a while, so it's fine. Yeah. I also have now messed up lungs along with tan sickness because <laughs> of the exposure. Yeah, it's actually Maybe, probably you Maybe probably have some like each other out. you actually probably have like chemical burns around your your arms where the puncture wounds happened, right? Because that's where it was like able to enter yeah. your bloodstream. So yeah, yeah, your hands are probably numb a little bit. That's good. That's why you can't hit anything. Got it. Move everybody back to there. Uh, XP, yes. Good call. Everybody gets a thousand experience. Congratulations. We also oh. never did goals. Uh, oh, that you know what? Of to which it's, I completed some. It's because we were super late. Uh, we will do them first thing next. Yeah, that's fine. Just first saying. thing next time we play. Uh, I will make a note to myself to remember. Uh, let me go do outro, and then we'll talk about next time we're playing. Okay? Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Bye, stream. Everybody in Goodbye, just a few people. minutes. Bye. Goodbye. All right, everyone. Glad you all could be here. Uh, that's going to do it for us tonight. Hope you all had as much fun as I'm sure my players did uh, getting messed around with by me. Um, really excited to continue the storyline. Hopefully we can save Gogo's dad and uh, everything will be fine and he totally won't have anything wrong with him. Uh, but I want to get out because I want to get these guys out because I got to talk to them afterwards. So thank you all for being here. It's been a wonderful time. From all of us to you, may you your dice always roll high. May you always pass your saving throws. And as always, Trinic did the eaten by giant crane. Bye, everybody.